Hello, here is another free Windows 7 training video for the free 7680 training course. This video looks at smart cards. Smart cards are devices which have a chip embedded in the card. An example of a smart card is a credit card. Different types of smart cards exist on the market. For this video, I will concentrate on smart cards used for authentication with Windows 7. Smart cards can vary in design. A blank one is shown here. Like an inkjet printable DVD, companies have the option of printing on the smart card. This can include such things as their own logo and information such as the owner of the card. The smart card is then put into a reader, either an external one as shown or an internal one built into some laptops. Smart cards are often considered more secure than usernames and passwords because users do, from time to time, write their passwords down, sometimes even on sticky notes that they stick to their monitor. Smart cards are also often considered more secure than passwords because in order to log in, you require the smart card. If someone were to steal your password, you may not even know it. But if they stole your smart card, you would notice the next time you try to use the smart card. Once the user notices the smart card is gone, they can have the access provided by the smart card removed. The main idea behind a smart card is this. You give the smart card to the user who then uses it to log in to the network. The smart card itself contains a public key and a private key. The problem is that if someone were to steal the smart card, along with it go the keys, more particularly the private key. Also, someone could borrow the smart card and use it and then return it without the person knowing. So there needs to be some security to protect the use of the smart card and the keys on the smart card. First of all, you want to protect the private key on the smart card. Most smart cards will not allow you to export the private key from the card. A smart card has the capability to process information and thus this is what makes it different from a floppy disk or USB thumb drive that could hold the keys. For example, software could send data to the smart card and have the data returned to the software encrypted with the private key. The private key never needs to leave the smart card. The chip on the smart card by its very design is very tamper-proof. It is not a simple matter of putting the smart card in a reader and using some specialized hacking software to read the data on the smart card. Even removing the chip from the smart card, though not impossible, is very difficult, and even just attempting to remove it will often damage the chip in the process. Due to how secure smart cards are, smart cards are often used for single sign-on. Single sign-on means that one sign-on method is used for many different systems. These can include independent systems. For example, you could have the same smart card to let you in the building, log on to Windows, and a Unix-based system. With Windows 7, smart cards can also be used with BitLocker. BitLocker will be covered in a later video. BitLocker is a system that allows you to encrypt your hard disk so that it cannot be removed and read in another system. We have already seen how the smart card design makes it next to impossible to copy the keys on the card. It is a lot harder than simply copying the magnetic strip used on credit cards. The next problem with smart cards is if the smart card were stolen or borrowed and then used without the owner's approval. To help prevent unauthorized use, Windows uses a system called multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication means that more than one system is used in authentication. If two types of authentication are used, it is often referred to as having two-factor authentication. If you used three types of authentication, you could call it three-factor authentication, or just keep it simple and stick to multi-factor authentication when using two or more authentication systems. Generally, multi-factor authentication systems will consist of two or three of the following. The first authentication is something you have, such as a smart card. Without it, you cannot log on. The next is something you know. The most widely used system is a PIN or password. The PIN or password may be used to prevent unauthorized use of the smart card or used to access a network. The last type is something you are. 
Examples of these are biometric devices such as fingerprint scanners. Usually smart cards are used with a pin or fingerprint scanner. You could use all three if you are really worried about security, but it is overkill for most scenarios. Having a biometric device, pin, or password is enough to prevent the smart card being used if it is stolen. In Microsoft documentation and in the exam, you may see the term smart card with PIV. PIV stands for Personal Identification Verification. PIV is simply a standard that is used with smart cards. The standard defines how to store information on the smart card, such as cryptographic key sizes. If you used a PIV smart card, Windows 7 will automatically download additional drivers if required from the Windows update. No additional software is required from the vendor or Windows to use a PIV smart card. If you use a smart card system that does not support PIV, you may need to install additional software in order to get the smart card to work. When you start using smart cards on your network, you will need a protocol in order for the smart card to communicate with the authenticating servers. Smart cards are also often used for remote access to a company's network. The main protocol that you will see used with smart cards is Tunneled Transport Layer Security, or TLS. This is usually bolted onto EEP or PEEP and written as EEP TLS or PEEP TLS. PEEP is more secure than EEP and should be used when possible. If you see a question in the exam asking which protocol is used with smart cards, I would look very carefully at any answer that mentions TLS in it. The last thing I want to look at with smart cards is group policy. There are two group policy settings that you may want to consider for use with your smart card. The two settings are found under Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, and finally, Security Options. The first setting, Interactive Login Require Smart Card, determines if a smart card is required to log on to Windows. If you enable this setting, the user will not be able to log on to Windows without their smart card. The second setting is Interactive Login Smart Card Removal Behavior. This policy defines what happens if a smart card is removed. You have the options of No Action, Lock Workstation, Force Log Off, and Disconnect if a remote desktop services session. If you are using smart cards for remote access only, you may only want to configure the remote session to disconnect since they should have their smart card with them when connecting. If you are using the smart card to open doors in a building, it is probably not the best option to force a log off if they remove the smart card. In this case, you would probably choose to lock the workstation. This concludes smart cards. You should now have a good understanding of them and can start supporting them in your workplace. In the next video, I will look at rights in Windows 7. Rights in Windows 7 determine what users can and cannot do. For more free videos, have a look at our website or YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.